eight rounds of boxing. Ladies and gentlemen, this next bout is scheduled for eight rounds of action in the welterweight division. At this point in time, we'd like to welcome to the ring from Romania, Robert Cristea. Here's Robert Cristea, and he's up against it, Glenn, as he comes in with a record of one and eight. He only has one knockout. Hails from Romania, and he's in tough tonight against Octave Urtal. Well, they certainly put him in to test him. You know, he's a boxer, obviously. That's why he don't have any knockout. You know, he only have that one knockout. So, he should be um, an interesting fight. We'll see what he has um, to show us. Cristea from Romania, the one knockout, weighed in at 146 pounds in this one. And he's facing a tough customer, Octav Urkow, who's had a lot of experience, 37-3 and three with 11 knockouts. 37 and 3 when you know that shows the experience he's been around the block a few times and he's certainly going to show this guy um we don't have much power to scare him a lot so you know it should be interesting fight and there you get a look at the favorite in tonight's first fight Octav Urkal, who hails from Berlin, Germany. Impressive resume, 37 and 3. 11 knockouts. Lematic of the idea that maybe he's not the biggest puncher either as he takes on Cristea tonight. Yeah, he's not he's, he's not a big puncher himself. But he's, he's, he's taking us a safe fight. You know, this guy that he's fighting have nine fights. And uh, he lose eight of them and only have one knockout with one win. So the guy he beat, he knocked the guy out. You have to wonder if he's just trying to stay busy by taking this fight. Uh, definitely, you know, he's trying to stay in the pocket line. And, um, you know, he's doing the safe thing. You know, he's trying to let the people think about him. And, you know, the same thing I would do in that position. Body language at all meaningful. As you look at Christe, he looks a little nervous. And there's Urkow, appears to be confident and ready to go. Corbo, the ring announcer, they'll get together in the center of the ring for the instructions. Daniel Vanderweel is the referee. You are on a clean fight, obey my commands at all times and protect yourself at all times. Give the best you can. Shake hands. Get a look at the tail of the tape. Urkel uh, comes in at the age of 36, so he's been around for a while. Robert Cristea perhaps going to get a little bit of schooling in there, Glenn. Just 25 years old. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you look at the guy record, you can see that he's just in there as another opponent, but good luck to him. Here we go, round number one, scheduled for eight rounds in the welterweight division. Urkal in the red trunks with the white trim, and Cristea wearing the blue trunks uh, with the white trim as well. I don't know if you'd expect too much of a feeling out process here. Uh, you might think that Urkal, the veteran, would just want to jump on this guy, Glenn. Yeah, definitely. I, I feel like you should just go in and um, take control right away so this guy feel like he don't, he don't um, belong in the ring with him. And the audience also realize that this guy don't belong in the ring with him. I'll make a statement. The quick left hand, a jab being established in his right that came in with some real power. And all of a sudden, you got Cristea in a little bit of trouble here in the early stages of round one. Yeah, certainly using his jab, he's using it as a stiff jab, and he's trying to set up the right hand behind it. But he's not using the jab often enough. And Cristea backing up immediately at the outset of round number one. Vanderweel warns Urkel about a backhanded punch. And finally we see some offense out of Cristea as he tries to make some kind of statement that he belongs in the ring here. Yeah, yeah, Cristea, he's, um, he's fighting a safe fight. He don't want to move his hands a lot. And, um, you know, you have reason to. But this guy punch like he have punching power, but he doesn't, he doesn't um, have a great knockout. So let's see what happens. Outstanding combination there by Octay Urkow as he begins to apply more and more pressure at the midway stage of round number one, the scheduled eight rounder. And you can hear the thud of those body shots. Yeah, certainly. You have good delivery in the punches. I'm surprised he don't have bigger knockouts. Interesting, you've boxed in Europe and the crowd applauding uh, midway through the first round, the body combination by Urkel. Yeah, definitely. You know, Europe, they're big uh, fans of boxing. They support the sport a lot. And that's one thing I like about fighting there. 
to stay on the run, and that was ruled a slip by Vanderweel as we saw Urkel connect, and Cristea went down, maybe trying to find a place to land. He's getting hit with some heavy shots here in round number one. <laughs> yeah, it looked like he's trying to um, look, look for somewhere to lay down. Low that was blow. a low blow, yeah, I saw that. Now Vanderweel gives the warning, uh, accidental low blow. This right hand looks like it's going to find a home from Urkel. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this guy is throwing some serious punches. Uh, I just would like to see him throw more of them, though. Two thunderous shots as urkal has been applying all of the steam here in round number one. And we've seen only one punch thrown by Cristea of any note. He landed one jab, and that's been it. Yeah, he's, um, he's playing defense. You know, he's just trying to move around, see if he could keep this guy turning so he don't have so much power in his punches. Uh, if you would take some of the power off his shots, yeah, um, you'll be able to throw more and land them uh, with better combination punches. Cristea keeping a large distance. <laughs> that distance has been bridged and down from a body shot. That was a great shot right to the liver yeah, by Urkel. Six. Good body shot Seven. there. Eight. Vanderweel administers the eight count, and that's the end of round number one. A very good round for Octav Urkel. You really do have to wonder why Urkel would be in there, Glenn, with an opponent of this caliber. A guy comes in with a 1-8 and eight record. You're assuming that it's going to be all Urkel. If you lose the fight, you don't have anything to gain, and uh, yet you would expect him to take this guy out fairly quick. Yeah, definitely. I mean, as you can see here, he's trying to throw big right hands. Um, he's setting it up. But, you know, if you just take off some of the power of the shots, uh, he would be able to land those shots a lot better. He landed a good shot there and put him down on the canvas. Good double left hook. He came up with a third one, but by the time he threw it, Cristea was already on the canvas. Oh, yeah, he was already on the way down. Getting set for round number two. This one's scheduled for eight. Based on what we saw in round number one, Glenn, it doesn't appear that it's likely to go the distance, but we'll see if Cristea can come up with some answers for what was a dominating Octave Urkel in round number one. Yeah, certainly. Um, Aqua Urkel definitely need to come out and um, establish himself with more combination and um, finish this fight. Uh, you're going to raise questions if you don't do it that way. A lot of power punches by Urkel in round number one. Didn't have the big knockout ratio, but he landed a body shot at the very end of the first yes, round that put Cristea up on the canvas for the first time in this fight. Yeah, definitely. You know, he's uh, closing the gap. He's moving his hands a little bit better now which I like it. I just think he could throw more combination. Oh, Cristea finally retaliates. Yeah. It shows us that he's alive in this one. Yeah, finally on the left one. Cal teeing off, uh, has pretty fast hands and throws punches in combination. So you like what you're seeing from the veteran or Cal. Continues to measure Cristea and cut off the ring, doing a good job of that. Yeah, he's, he's throwing cushion punches. If you give a little more snap, he wouldn't get the guy to move away from him so quickly like that. It does appear he can land at will on Cristea, who's offered minor resistance. He landed one jab in round number one, and we saw that brief combination in an exchange during the early stages of round two. Another big right hand lands home. And Urkel continuing to put pressure, immense pressure, on Cristea in this fight. Cristea, he's just, he just, it's hard to fight a guy that not punching. He's just playing the defense, and, um, you know, he's not giving the guy anything so he could move his head and punch off him. Rarely see anybody win a fight going backwards the entire time. Um, going backwards and not throwing punches. There have been guys that have had styles where they could fight going backwards. It's not an easy thing to do. You fought one, and Antonio Tarver is not bad going backwards. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, you have some guys who move around. Oh, big right there. Oh, nice. But, he, you know, this guy is moving backwards, but he's not throwing anything. You know, he's just playing defense. Oh, there goes a nice punch over the top. Down he goes. Three, the uppercut four, earlier might have set that knockdown up. Six, seven. Vanderweel eight, administers okay. the eight count. Cristea is taking a veritable beating so far. Yeah. Drill around and change of this fight. Yeah, he's fighting scared. You got to go out there and establish yourself against your opponent. Cal comes back with a jab, now measuring his man, possibly sensing that he's got Cristea in deep trouble here in this fight in the second round. Yeah, Cristea just moving around. Nice body shot. Another right hand upstairs, and Cristea wobbles on spaghetti legs as we come near the close of round number two. 
Yeah, these guys are hard to fight. They just run around. They keep their hands up. They're not trying to land anything. They're just trying to survive. And that's um, those are the harder ones to fight. There's the bell ending round number two. Or Cal touches gloves with Cristea as if to say, "Sorry, old chap, but he's administering a serious beating here for yeah, two definitely. rounds." He's going out there trying to establish himself and do his job. Into the corner of her cow. Instructions <laughs> being issued in German is a replay of the knockdown. Well, a good shot over the top. He threw that overhand right, landed right in the ear, along the neck there. And uh, they'll meet down he goes. That's the second time we've seen Stay had knocked down where if he'd stayed up, he probably would have been finished yeah. by the following shot. Yeah, definitely, yeah. He, he, you know, I believe if he uses his jab and, 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 he, and he still move, but, you know, throw punches off those movements, they have a better chance. Round number three, scheduled for eight. It's been a one-sided show so far for Octave Percal, who figured to be the dominator in this bout. Much more experienced. And you have a guy in Cristea who might want to get a copy of the classifieds if his career continues on this path. Yeah, definitely. Now he's moving around again. The guy's trying to cut off the ring and get him in the corner so he can start throwing punches. Measuring Cristea, comes up with a big right hand. We know that Cristea's been hurt at the end of both round number one and round number two. Been on the canvas twice, once in each round. Cal moving in, perhaps for the finishing blows, just covering up is Cristea, and he's offering no resistance. Whatsoever, Glenn. Yeah, if he stay, if he stay like this, um, he's going to go down again for a third time in, in each round. Because you know he's not giving the guy anything to think about. He's not throwing a jab. He's not throwing a right hand. He's basically, basically looking for the guy to tie it out or something. Big right hand and a combination. Two more go. shots to the body. Three. That could be it. Three. Vanderweel will give the count. Cristea, looking Six. at his corner as if to Seven. say he doesn't want any Eight. more of this. And who could blame him? Oh, uh, definitely. He's outclassed by far. Vanderweel stopped this fight, you could justify it. It's been one-sided all the way. More body Ooh, shots. More body shots. He is punishing Cristea to the body. Your Cal, good performance here. Yeah. Well, he's certainly shown his class now against this guy. Still measuring Cristea. Cristea backing up. Had his track shoes on in round number two. Might have cement shoes on now as he's been hammered throughout this fight. Yeah, and the referee's staying close to it. Um, any, any other big shots land here, you might just stop it. I was thinking that the referee might advise Cristea that if he doesn't fight back, he is going to stop it. Yeah, definitely. You see him watching it very closely now. Lopsided match, good performance by Urkel. Take nothing away from him. As you said, Glenn, he's a difficult guy to fight because he's offering you nothing. And he's just moving around. He's not he's not standing stationary so you could set anything up. You keep having your reset. Nice body shot again. That could be the finishing yeah, touch, and it, it is. is. Vanderweel is going to wave this one off. Yeah. Deservedly so. Fine performance by Octav Urkal. I don't know if he gained anything in particular by this victory, but Robert Cristea not offering much resistance. Game, though, by hanging in there for three rounds. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he beat up a guy that he should beat up. And uh, he did it in um, good fashion. He, he knocked him down in each round. So, you know, that's not too bad. But uh, I'm sure the people would like to see him against stronger, stronger competition. I wonder, as we said, why he would take a matchup like this. The official announcement coming up. Steve Corbo is our ring announcer. Another look at uh, Urkal. Yes, to, that's uh, Cristea. You have to be satisfied if you're Urkal. Uh, he did everything that he had to do in this fight. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he come out, he tried to give rounds basically by uh, just moving around and keeping his hands up, you know, trying to be safe uh, while you have a guy trying to pound him and take him out of here. Surprising he doesn't have a higher knockout ratio. He looked like he had pretty thunderous power to the body and uh, was also able to punch the combination and take it upstairs. Here we go, here's the decision.
Coming up, our next bout of the evening, it's going to be four rounds.